We're experiencing extraordinary budget issues in the state. At this point, the state's answer has been to rely primarily on furloughs to close the gaps. While this has worked to date, one has to wonder if that is the appropriate answer going forward. Does the state have too many employees? Virtually every company in America has responded to the Great Recession by reducing their headcount. While painful, they have no choice but to respond to the dramatic change in the economy. At what point does the state determine it, it can no longer support the number of employees it carries? Well, I think, um, again, that uh, state government, I, I mean, I think government just at, at the state and federal level is too big. Um, I was watching uh, a report about this proposal from the governor to uh, make the agriculture commissioner, the insurance commissioner, the labor commissioner, and the state superintendent of education appointed positions. And there was a person commenting on it, and they said, well, the governor already appoints 3,200 people. And I thought, my first thought was not about that issue, but how many of those 3,200 employees do we really need? Um, are there some positions that could be cut? And again, I want to underline this. I'm not saying that in, in some times some of these positions might be warranted, but I do believe that when we have the type of economic situation we have right now, uh, we have to look everywhere uh, for savings. And so I would certainly favor a top-to-bottom audit of every department in state government uh, to look at every job description, to look at every pay scale, um, make sure that we're paying people what we ought to be paying them, and make sure that we've got the right force for the revenue that we're bringing in. And uh, I think that would result in some significant reduction in uh, the state payroll. Do you think that government creates jobs? What should the government do to actually contribute to the private sector that actually creates jobs? Well, I have a brief answer to your first question. That answer would be no. Uh, the government does not create jobs. Um, to uh, talk about what the government can do, um, as I think I mentioned a little bit earlier, government can create an environment that's either incredibly unfriendly to business, and you get into a situation like California has, where businesses are leaving, the state in good times made all of these obligations to the citizens and to state employees and state agencies that they can't fulfill, and they're in a sort of a budgetary death spiral. Um, so that's one, one way you can go. Be inhospitable to business, business is going to find another place to go. Um, or you can look for policies that are business friendly, that encourage entrepreneurship, that bring in a small business. Uh, my grandparents had a grocery store at 5th Avenue and 8th Street in downtown Columbus. They ran a laundromat. Uh, they ran a, a, a service station. Um, I learned a lot from them and from working with my father in, in law practice about running a small business and what it means uh, to pay that tax bill and what it means to pay employees. And, you know, we just have to recognize uh, as a state government that it is business, and again, the emphasis is on small business, because small business is where about 80% of the job creation comes from. Uh, we need a, a set of policies, tax policies and regulatory policies, that encourage uh, new business to locate here for, and for small business to expand. And that's what I'm going to be committed to uh, as the next state senator. This is along the same line. At the current time, law enforcement and teachers are being forced to take furlough days. Some say these are among the lowest paid state employees. Is that true? How does the pay of teachers and law enforcement in Georgia compare with other states? Where would you make cuts in lieu of furlough days for these people? Let me ask you, um, in terms of when you say lowest paid in the question, do you mean compared to other state employees or compared? Okay, okay. Um, 
I would have to um, to get back to you on whether their uh, the the relative rank of their pay. I know that teachers in Georgia, compared regionally, are well paid. I don't know about any national uh, statistics and where they would fall uh, in a 50-state comparison. Um, with law enforcement, I think we're talking about a lot of different agencies. I mean, we're not just talking about state troopers. Um, I, I will. I will find out and I will get back to you about that. Uh, when it comes to, again, the furlough issue, I think, once again, it's a question of our priorities. And we've got to, I mean, in my mind, uh, that ought to be um, the very last thing we do. We ought to be looking at selling excess state property. We ought to be looking at um, permanent reduction in payroll. We ought to be looking at um, any other way, uh, another proposal that's been made is local collection of sales taxes. Um, that's been done over in Alabama. It's generated a lot of money. Um, even though the person that has primarily been touting that idea is a Democrat, I still think that's a good idea. Um, and it's something where we might be able to capture a lot of additional revenue. So let's try to look at all of those proposals, all of those issues. I know that the the pilot program for that that has been done in a couple of Georgia counties has been very successful. So let's look at those things again before we start furloughing employees because when we, when the state hires somebody, just like when your business hires somebody, if you hire somebody and you say, I want you to do a job for a given wage, we ought to honor that commitment that we make. And in my mind, when we do these furloughs, we're breaking that commitment. The other thing about it is it's not a long-term solution. Um, you know, that's, that's a one-time, one-off solution, and we can't get into the process where we're doing that every year, or frankly, I think we're going to lose some of these folks to, to other areas where they're not going to be worried about whether or not they're going to be paid. So I think we need to do everything we can before we get into furloughing either law enforcement or teachers. That has prompted me. When I get home, I'm going to look it up myself, but a few years ago, Georgia's salaries for teachers is one of the highest in the nation. It might surprise some of you. I don't know what it is today, but I'm going to go find out. Now we come up with our last three questions. It has to do with state sovereignty. I think you sort of covered some of these. Also, do you fully understand the limits of the federal government under the U.S. US Constitution? If so, explain. Yes, I do. Um, the, uh, the, the federal government, um, it, it's very easy to, to find out what its limitations are. You just need to read the Constitution. It, it's all right there, what the government is supposed to do. And if you read through it, you get to the Bill of Rights, you get to the, particularly the Tenth Amendment, and it's very clear on this subject. If the powers are not enumerated to the federal government, they belong to the states or to the people. And so, yes, the, the, uh, the federal government is, is very uh, restricted and limited in what it should do. Um, has it observed those limits? Absolutely not. And one of the things that I hope to do in the state Senate is in those areas where the government is overreaching, whether it be some sort of national socialized medicine, whether it be um, environmental regulations, where there is absolutely no constitutional authority to do it, we are going to take action. We're going to direct the Attorney General uh, to take the necessary action so that, for example, if you want to talk about cap and trade, if we have a Georgia company uh, in a facility in Georgia creating energy in Georgia for Georgians being transmitted within the state, I don't see how the federal government has any authority uh, to regulate that activity. And uh, that's something that we've got to realize, go, going back to one of your earlier questions about a philosophy of government, people think about checks and balances at the federal level between the different branches, but there's also a check in terms of the sovereign states and the federal government. So that's something that I believe very strongly in and uh, will certainly uh, work very hard so that the federal government will observe the, uh, the limits of its authority.